Good morning. Sometimes we look at life that it's like a glass half empty rather than looking at it as a glass half full of water. So our perspective will affect the way we behave and our attitude is affected because of our perspective in life. So as we continue to meditate on the story of Easter and Mordecai in the book of Easter, we learn that God is the one who is controlling the affairs of our lives. He gave opportunities. So let us read our text for today in Easter, chapter 2, verse 1 to 8, for our text for today's devotional, God's word for today. After these things, when the anger of King Ahasuerus had abated, he remembered Vasti and what she had done and what had been decreed against her. Then the king's young men who attended him said, let beautiful young virgins be sought out for the king, and let the king appoint officers in all the provinces of his kingdom to gather all the beautiful young virgins to the harem in Susa, the citadel, under custody of Higai, the king's eunuch, who is in charge of the women. Let their cosmetics be given them, and let the young woman who pleases the king be queen instead of Basti. This pleased the king, and he did so. Now, there was a Jew in Susa, the citadel, whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jair, son of Shimei, son of Kes a Benjaminite, who had been carried away from Jerusalem among the captives, carried away with Jeconiah, king of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had carried away. He was bringing up Hadassah, that is Esther, the daughter of his uncle, for she had neither father nor mother. The young woman had a beautiful figure and was lovely to look at. And when her father and her mother died, Mordecai took her as his own daughter. So when the king's order and his edict were proclaimed, and when many young women were gathered in Susa the citadel in custody of Higai, Esther also was taken into the king's palace and put in custody of Higai, who had charge of the woman. According to Albert Einstein, in the middle of difficulty lies opportunity. Indeed, it's only in the darkest night that one could go stargazing. You cannot do it during the day. You can only see the stars when it's in the darkest night. And it's not incidental that the name of this young woman was Esther or Hadassah, which means star. This young woman, young lady, lost her parents and she was an exile. She was survived by her distant cousin, Mordecai, who adopted her as his own daughter. This scenario may cast a gloom of hopelessness to Esther. What would be the future of a young, young woman like her? However, Mordecai saw her that she was a beautiful woman. She had a beautiful figure and was lovely to look at. So as a young woman growing as a slave in a faraway land as a Jew, everything seemed bleak until the opportunity came. When Queen Vasti was removed as the queen, there came a time that the anger of the king subsided and the idea of Replacing the Queen Vasti was reopened or discussed. So the king's young men, those who were assisting the king, suggested to him that they need to search in the whole kingdom as the replacement. Who will be the, the, that woman who will replace the queen? So they suggested that the king would choose who among the beautiful young virgins that will be who will be brought to the harem in Susa, the citadel. And it would be Hegai, the king's eunuch, who will be in charge of all the, the ladies, the, the virgins. So 
One of the beautiful girls brought in was Esther of the millions of the ladies in the whole empire comprising 127 provinces from end to end. Esther was one among the beautiful girls who was brought in. Interestingly, God had allowed this opportune time when Mordecai and Esther did not expect. So as our reflection for this morning, as believers of our God, the covenant-keeping God, Yahweh, like them, Mordecai and Esther, both of them had hoped that God would bring them back to the promised land. As a Jew, it was always their dream and desire that they will be brought back to the promised land. But it seems that it was really impossible. It was not possible at their situation. But looking into this story today, God is always the unseen guide of the people, like Mordecai and Easter here. God is always behind the scenes as well as the scenes that unfold the story of our lives. Let us remember that nothing happened by chance. There's no such thing as accident or incident in our lives. Everything is orchestrated by a sovereign God. We learned that from Solomon who wrote Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11 when he said, He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity into man's heart, yet so that he cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. So everything is put in place by God at its own, its own timing. It's at the, always at the right time. God is never mistaken to allow things to happen in our lives at a certain time of our lives. So let's always believe that God is the one putting the puzzle of our lives. But we should not be passive. We should continue to do what we need to do. Be faithful, continue just to do the will of God. But let's not bother of the things that we cannot really grasp, that we cannot control, because it's beyond our realm. It's on the realm of God. So our encouragement this morning is this. Opportunity knocks because God has appointed it and we must be ready. For having God on our side, let's always be filled with optimism. God will always provide an opportunity for us. As David, the great king, had expressed his faith in Psalm 27 verse 13, he said, I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amidst the, the problems, the crisis that he experienced, he was hunted down by, by Saul, his own son rebelled against him. It seems that everything was going against him at, as, at a certain period in his life. But he was always optimistic. He had this positive outlook, not just for the sake that he could, um, he was hoping against hope, but because he believed that God is the good God and that he could believe that God is always in control. God could not be wrong. He's always right. Let us always believe. What are we going to believe? That we will be able to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, especially this year, as the months unfold, as the days go by, let's always believe that our God is good. His mercies never come to an end. His faithfulness will never wane. Let's always believe that everything that happens, whether pleasant or unpleasant, whether we understand it or not, it's always part of that package that everything works together for good to us who love God according to his own purpose. Yes, Mordecai and Esther will be written in history that they were the people unexpectedly that God could use in the history of the Jews so that we will be able to see this reality, this truth, that God is always in control. Let's believe 
that God will give us opportunities. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that we don't need to manipulate ourselves, our situations, our surroundings. We need just to be faithful in obeying your word, doing what is right, and believe that you are in control. Lord, we know that nothing in history that happens that you are not aware, that you, you are not in control. Whatever it is, Lord, no matter how unpleasant, no matter how discouraging, we always believe that you are our God, who is a good God. Help us to believe that you are our good God, that we can expect that the best is yet to come for us who believes and who trusts in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.